Right, beginning the electrical test. These are the old wires that have been removed. These are the old fuses and fuse holders that have been removed. Moving on, I'm gonna do cable tests and I'll be uh, narrating during the test. I'll get that set up. In fact, I'll set up here first and uh, I might as well do it live just to show that the meter is working correctly. I'll hold that up there. Right, so these are the speaker cables and they are wired to one ohm uh, for the, uh, the woofer, meaning that there's one ohm resistance in these cables. I'll put that there. I'll put that there. And we've got a reading. There it is, exactly one ohm. And it's moving around because I'm moving around. If I can hold that there. I hope that's coming out on the video. At 0 0.9, okay? Nearest diameter to one ohm. So we know that the test is working correctly. We'll now move over to this connection here. And I'll begin all the various tests. Just straight. Right, next resistance test on the earth. I've not bothered taking it off the battery. So we've got this wire running from here to that section there, touching and touching. And you'll notice there's no reading. No reading because zero resistance, okay? This cable here runs down underneath the vehicle. That's sound as well. There's no point me going under the car. We've got a zero resistance here, and that's an earthing point. Moving along, let's do a resistance test on one of the lives. So this is the live coming in from the front of the vehicle through the fuse, uh, connecting to the battery, and from here, the cable going down, goes down to my live block near the amplifiers. And you wanna see that there's no resistance on any of these either. There's no problem with the fuses. So the meter, let's see, can we see it there? Okay, you can see the meter from one end of the fuse to the other end of the fuse. No reading, zero resistance. Or it's actually showing zeros. From this end of the fuse to the battery, which is fed from the other battery, zero resistance again. Now from this going round, it goes round to This main block here, it actually goes through the fuse first. So while I'm here, let's get that one done. Let's put that in the camera. Does that show? Yeah, that's showing. Okay, so that live, I'll go from the other live, so I'm behind you now, uh, that point there to this point here, and we've got Look at that, 0 0.1 and 0 again. So no resistance there either. Moving around from this side of the fuse to this side, 0 resistance. From this side of the fuse to the block, 0 resistance. And this is the live cable that goes into the 5.5 uh, Pro. Amplifier from there to there. Again, let me hold up steady. Right, there you go. I hope that's coming through. That's zero resistance as well. So there's no problem with contacts regarding the cables. Let's do this earth. This is the earth cable that goes to the amplifier. Let's do that one as well. From the amplifier to the earthing point. Move that wire out of your way. There's the earthing point there and zero resistance. And that earthing point goes down and connects to the chassis. So I think that's all the wires. There's no resistance. I'm now gonna turn things on to show you that the power comes here okay. It's holding its voltage at 14.8 at the front end and we'll see what it works out at the back. So I'll pause the video. Right, I'll start with the engine off. 
just this is I've reconnected the battery and we've got from this end of the fuse live terminal there we'll go to an earthing point I can just hit the end of the wire to make it even better and we have 12.8 from the battery let's go back down to the earthing point here same thing right other side of the fuse so make sure the fuse is fine 12.8 again uh, where we're we going now to the block it has to work because it went to the fuse 12.8 and to the end of the wire that goes into the amplifier 12.8 so that's solid the live coming through no problems I'll now turn the engine on and I'll show you that it's going to go up to 14.8 because it's a high output alternator. Okay, now we're set to DC volts, the engine running. So there's power coming from the front alternator, front battery to rear battery, coming to this section here. Let's see if there's a problem with the voltage. So we're on this side of the fuse. Uh, the negative, we'll take this negative reading here. And we have a reading 14.75 volts. And that's from this back end, which means obviously all the way through this way, it should be fine as well. Well, if the fuse is right, let's see if the fuse is right. 14.75, so the fuse is good. Let's go to the block itself, distribution block, which feeds all the amps. There's a slight voltage drop there. I didn't even notice that before. 14.64 5, 14.504947 Get a good contact there 14.3, 14.4 Let's go back to the fuse side 14.76 is good Then the wire, 14.76 to this block here so this block it's a slight voltage drop nothing dangerous it's still run an amp anything over 12 volts will run an amp but I'm going to look into that I might need to clean the contacts inside and the actual amp itself the power going to the amp itself so these so there's 14.67 going to the amp 14.67 now so that's the live power coming through nicely uh, in addition I'll just bring this camera here you can see that this amp is up and running now this amp is connected to all this wiring if there was a problem with the wiring this amp wouldn't work okay I've got no problems with that amp so far what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring the other amp in here I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. However, I'm going to turn this amp off because when I what's been happening when I wire, when I plug in the amp which I think is a problem, it goes into protect mode and it throws its protect mode signal back and it throws this other amp into protect as well. And it's not healthy to keep throwing your amps into protect. So I'm going to turn this amp off. And if this amp works, only then when I will I turn that on. But the reason I don't want to leave it on, I don't want it to go into protect. I've done it too many times, it's going to end up damaging it. Okay, so I'm just going to wire this amp up here on its own. Uh, just before I do that, I forgot to test the, uh, uh, this, um, what's it called, trip wire, this um, switch wire. Okay, positive. Um, negative. I don't know if that's coming out in the camera. Let's see. Uh, is that more negative? Yeah. And 14.2 volts even through there. That's the uh, high power alternator on the switch wire. Okay. Right. Right, so just to run through again, this wire here I've disconnected from the distribution block is runs that amplifier. I'm taking that out of the equation. Um, I've turned the engine off, so we should be down to the 12 or something volts. 
Let's get that there. Bloody cables. That's visible. Just to show I've turned the engine off, we've still got power. There and there. 12.66. Hope that's coming through. So that's the power coming through. And the switch wire, well done with it, is here. Remote wire, that's what you call them. Remote wire, that should have dropped as well. It's jumping around, isn't it? Was that jumping around? Is it bad connection? There. 13. 13.8, depending how my fingers stop wobbling. Got down to 11 now, 11 and a bit. So there's voltage there, that's the switch wire. Just running through the batteries now, alternators off. Uh, so, yep, yeah, so all this is good to plug into the other amp just to get the thing to turn on at low voltage, not 14 volts. So I don't want to cause any damage. Right, here we go. I'm as safe as I can possibly be. You can see 12.57 there. I think that's coming up. Yeah. I'm first going to connect. I'll move that live out of the way. I'm first going to connect this negative wire to the negative to the amp. Let's see if it does anything. No, that's fine. Let's crank that down. Now, let's see what happens when I put the positive. If there's any voltage drop or if the thing shouldn't turn on because the uh, the switch wire's not in. That's in there. And look what's happened. It's not even switched on with the switch wire. The switch wire is here. And straight away, look at the voltmeter. Look at it. It's dropped straight down. Now I'm set, I'm I'm reckoning that's what the uh, protection mode is. It 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 blocks the volts from going in. Oh look, it's creeping back up now. Eleven and a half. That's interesting. Back to twelve and a half. Well, that's strange. So I'm now going to put the switch wire and see if this thing will power up. I'll pause the video a minute because I've got to go and turn it on. Right, that's the remote wire is now installed. We're still reading 1255. That's good news because, well, it's from the distribution block, which is connected to that. But you saw it drop before, which was weird. I'm now going to go and turn the amp on. And we're going to leave this here and then I'll we'll see what happens. I'm going to turn the amp on and see what happens. Right, that's the amp on. And as soon as you turn the amp on, the power's coming in. Look what's happening. It's dropped. It's totally cut out. And let's have a look at the amp itself. No lights. The lights are here. Nothing. So that's what my problem is. We've been through every stage where there's no load. So it's not a bad signal from RCAs. It's nothing to do with the speakers being blown or anything causing a bad signal because they're all disconnected. This is straight power. We've tested all the powers, we've tested all the resistance, everything's perfect. There's an issue here. Uh, we need to discuss what we're going to do about that. You need to explain to me how the warranty works. I'm assuming that AMP needs to get sent somewhere. Is there a local... Um, uh, uh, service center that it gets sent to does it get sent to Germany to Russia I have no idea uh, the only way I can intervene see if this if this warranty is just going to take forever months and months the other option which I'm going to offer to you is I take the amplifier to a, um, a professional 
guy that I know is actually a friend of the family. That's all he does. TVs, amplify, all electronics. He's an electronic wizard. Uh, just to open it up and have a look and see if any of the MOSFETs have gone or just to, just to run a test on it at this stage. The problem is, if we go and open it up out here, that may throw the warranty void. I don't want to lose my warrant warranty. So that's up to you um, to explain how it works to me. I'm offering to you to take it. Listen, man, if this guy opens it up out here and it's a little MOSFET and it's a little five euros just to change the MOSFET, I'd rather just get it done and pay for it. But if it's, if it's something worse, I don't know. You, you just explain to me how the warranty works. So uh, you've seen everything. If there's any other video you need, I, I can't see why there would be any other video you need. You've seen all the cables are sweet. You've seen the voltage is sweet. You've seen the resistance is sweet. And you've witnessed now what's happening. As soon as I go to switch it on, put the switch wire in, it was fine. Found its voltage. As soon as I went to run the switch wire power in, boom, it's blocked it. And it's showing two point something volts. And that's down here at the block. It's not even at the back of the amp. So that's why that it throws all the other amps out because then the other amps only receive 2.6. So the signal's coming back and switching the whole block off. If I move this, here's a, here's a test for you. If I move this power line, let me just undo that whilst I'm on. You can witness something else. Now, if I move this back, to the fuse look back up to 5.4 so just from here to here which we've already tested is perfectly fine it seems to send the, the protect signal from the wire down to this connection point here and then it stops there two volts here two volts there comes through this little wire the minute it hits the fuse, it's back up again. Pretty weird, huh? You'd think it would do the whole line. But there you go. We've done a test from here to here, and the resistance fine. So there's nothing wrong with that wire. It's just a weird way it works. Anyway, you've had a look at it. You get, Tell me what you think. All right, we'll speak soon, uh, Rob. Thanks very much, buddy.